Hey everybody, it's time to make your favorite pot roast. And I like to use a slow cooker for mine. I start with three pounds of a rump roast with some soy sauce and my very special secret ingredient, better than bouillon. I use one cup of flour, a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a dash, maybe a, a, a quarter teaspoon of of cayenne pepper. I like a little hot to my stuff. Adds a little flavor. Put some olive oil or any kind of oil you like in a skillet. You need plenty of oil so don't be afraid to use it. And you take your pot roast and you put it in that bag of flour and seal it up with a little air in it so you got a like a ball to toss around. And don't get too rigorous with this because you can bust a bag but pat the flour Onto the, onto the roast and put it in your medium high skillet. Now we're gonna brown every side of the roast. It doesn't have to be super brown, but it just needs to be brown to kind of sear in the juices. And also to make the gravy for your pot roast because a pot roast is only as good as the gravy you make to put on it. That's the truth. Put your pot roast in the crock pot and now we're gonna to start to make the gravy. Now add some more oil if you need to, and we're gonna take the flour that was in the bag, cause that should be enough, you put a cup, and put that into the oil. Make sure you got some water handy because we're gonna use about four cups of it and we're gonna stir this flour around in the skillet to get it brown more. You might have to add a little more oil, but that's okay. Just keep stirring and it'll get sizzly, and it'll start to change colors a little bit. Now add a dollop of this better than bouillon and get it melted in there, stirring it around on medium low heat. Just keep stirring till it gets incorporated. And here's the secret, don't add too much water at one time. One cup at a time or even less. And do it on this medium low heat because we don't cook on high at Fly Lady. So keep adding another cup until it gets incorporated to get thicker and thicker and just keep keep stirring and it'll get smooth again and it'll get now I'm gonna add some soy sauce because I it needs a little salt to it and it doesn't matter if you use plain flour or self rising flour but it's gonna need a little salt and the soy sauce adds that to it. So get it all smooth and then we're gonna add that to our, our slow cooker. Now, it can be thick, it can be thin, it doesn't matter, because it's gonna cook, the pot roast is gonna cook in this liquid, and it is going to make your pot roast taste amazing. Now, you might want a taste of it, just a little taste of it right now, just to make sure you like the flavor, because it might need a little more salt. Trust your taste buds. Now wash a few potatoes. I like to keep the potato skins on because they stay together in the pot. If you take the potato skins, if you peel them, it, it makes for mushy stuff. And I don't like mushy. Now, and I forgot to slice up the onions to put in, in the gravy. I usually do it while it's in the skillet. So I, I'm just going to add it right here to the, to the slow cooker. Just, you, you can't make a mistake. It's just all it is. It's, it's, it's imperfect cooking at its best. So just add the onions. Onions give it great flavor. And it doesn't take long to add them. I just like to slice them right off in little slivers and throw them in there and then stir it all around. Just don't be afraid to make a mistake. You know, half of cooking is, you know, messing up. And that's okay. We just keep sampling a little bit and get it the way we like it. Sometimes I holler at Robert to come in the kitchen and I need your taste buds, honey. And he comes in and tells me what I need to do or he'll add something to it. We, we play a little game like that. So it's always fun to be in the kitchen. We have a kitchen that is uh, more than a one butt kitchen and we can both be in there at the same time. This pot roast is going to make your house smell wonderful. It's just going to be amazing. And getting dinner in the crock pot ready to go 
frees you up this afternoon to kind of, if you want to take a nap, whatever you want to do. So stir those onions into the gravy, add those potatoes to it, and your crock pot's going to be good and full. I have a seven quart crock pot. Scrub your carrots. I don't even like to peel the carrots because they have a really thin skin on them, but scrub them with a little scouring pad. Cut the ends off and start poking those into the gravy. And before you know it, in four hours on high and eight hours on low, you're going to have a pot roast. And be sure and look up my biscuit recipe and make some biscuits to go along with this because you're going to want to put some gravy over those biscuits. You're going to like this recipe. Yum. I got my sparkles on today. It just felt like a sparkly day. Sun was shining. It's all good. I have six pages of questions because it's January. And y'all have lots of questions in January. Patty got 400 emails today. <laughs> we are we are rolling. Justin doing the final push, getting everything out of the out of the office. The last thing he he pulled off the kitchen, top of the kitchen cabinets was our ostrich eggs that our ostrich um Many years ago, we got them for Christmas. Sent us some painted ostrich eggs. And you've seen them in in, uh, in some of the pictures where Justin's dusting the top of the kitchen cabinets. Anyway, we're excited. We've got space set up for packing orders over at the warehouse. We've had this warehouse longer than we've had our building. And... It's just good to see a building that is as nice as the one Justin built be used to keep people safe. And that makes me happy. Yep, it makes me happy. Lipstick askew. <laughs> so get on in here, everybody. Let's see, we got 65 people in here. It's going to get cold again. We got a second cold front coming across the country. And y'all just be ready. Um, my friend, he's not my friend, but he's a podcaster I follow, Pinball. He's just north of Knoxville on the Kentucky state line. And they they lost water in their kitchen sink because it's a north-facing wall. And it never sees the light of day. And so he was discussing the things that he's learned through this uh through this cold snap and you know it hasn't he's lived in that house for five years and he's never seen it that cold there he's seen 11 degrees but he's never seen two and just a few difference it, you know it just makes a huge difference okay everybody let's get started uh, we have uh, announcements Tomorrow's Friday. Today is Thursday. It's Aaron Day. <coughs> we we break our, our week into a basic weekly plan. And we will talk about that in, in some of our questions today. I haven't really looked over them, but I, pr I have to make them bigger so that I can see them. And, you know, it's just going to be a fun day. We have... Our calendar inventory is getting low. So, y'all, if you haven't gotten your calendar yet, you need to do so right now. Don't wait. We've got a 40. I, I told them not to take the 45% discount off of things until we got moved and got settled in a new place. And we ran out of we ran out of calendars. That's pretty much how I want to give you the biggest discount we can possibly give you. We have been going through this book. We're in day 18 and check out my 11 commandments. And here they are. Keep your sink clean and shiny. Do your before bed routine every night. Do your morning routine every day right when you get up. 
Don't allow yourself to be sidetracked by social media. Pick up after yourself. If you get it out, put it away. Don't try to do two projects at, at once. Patty and I were talking about that this morning. One job at a time. Do something for yourself every day, maybe even every morning and night. Work as fast as you can to get a job done. Yeah, we, we dilly-dally around. And sometimes we just need to stay focused. Now, I'm not saying rush at doing it, but stay focused. Smile when you don't feel like it. It's contagious. Make your mind up to be happy, and you will be. Pamper yourself. You deserve it. And then tomorrow, uh, the quote of the day, today's quote of the day, if you don't take care of you, who will? And I lost my bookmark. Where'd the bookmark go? There it is. We'll deal with day 19 tomorrow. Y'all, this is a fun book. It's a fun book to have on hand all the time. <clears throat> Let's see. Next thing. Get your complete pack. That thing's going to be changing because we're probably going to run out of the, um, the kitchen scrubbers before we can get them in because Chinese New Year's happening. It's just craziness. Okay, are you ready? I'm going to put my coffee right here. I've cleaned off a countertop over here. We got 119. We've ha been having close to 200 people in here live, so that's wonderful. So, it's not as cold today. The angle of the dangle is not too bad, but last night you it was just I've never seen anything like it. It was really cold. Questions for January the 19th, 2024. What is weekly home blessing hour? Well, we used to do an hour when we didn't do shows and Doing a whole show just about Weekly Home Blessing was difficult, but we had all our wonderful songs. We had our songs in my little antique iPod, and, you know, it just fell into doing three minutes, three minutes of blessing your home with each song. And if you need to go back and do it again, then fine. But the main thing is, you don't know what you can get done in three minutes. I'm telling you, I can feather dust my whole house in two minutes. So Weekly Home Blessing is a list of seven things. And we play a game. I roll a dice that my sweet darling made for me. And I we pull the sheets off the bed and get them in the washing machine. Because sheets are expensive. <clears throat> And we, we vacuum or run your carpet sweeper, just the middles. We empty all the trash in the house. Doesn't take long. We wipe down our windows and our doors and our light switches and glass top tables. And we um, declutter our hot spots. And what's the next one? We mop. Three minutes to mop your floors. It's amazing. And we grab our feather dusters. We do this in an hour. Really on the show, we do it in 30 minutes. And it gets done. It really does get done. And you know, your house looks good. And you're blown away about how wonderful it looks with only doing three minutes per item. Do the fly lady rags work on ceramic tile? What else can I use them on besides my windows? They do a great job on them. I use Fly Lady rags to wash dishes. I keep them in the bathtub for 
scrubbing my knees and elbows and washing my face. There's just many uses. Uh, if I'm, which I haven't been sick in a very long time, going on five years. Uh, God bless the Lord. I mean, it's because of him. It's because of him. But these rags make great handkerchiefs too. <laughs> and they're just wonderful to have around. I keep, I keep one by my chair to clean my glasses and my phone. I've always got, got my hand on a rag. I start cooking in the kitchen, wiping down. It's just a habit I got into many years ago when we had a white cat that uh, he loved to get on the kitchen counters and I didn't love for him to get on the kitchen counters. So Robert built me some cat fences, but he could still jump straight up from the floor and get on the counter. Yes, they work on ceramic tile. They work to clean your shower. They work the soap film that's on your shower doors, it gets, it, you just rub a one foot square and the rag will get soapy from that soap film. Is there a best time to declutter? It seems that if I set a time for something and schedule it, like on my fly lady calendar, then I'm more likely to do it. I have ADHD. Thank the Lord for your ADHD. It keeps you from being bored. We thank the Lord in all things. And the calendar has been a lifesaver for me to know what to do and when to do it. You declutter every day. When you are in the mode to get rid of clutter, you have to get rid of something every day. One thing, three things, five things. Declutter every single day and you will till the day you die. It's just how it is because we hold on to things and we have got to learn to let it go. Okay, next question. When my children were younger, I did fly lady every day. The routines gave us such peace. When they went off to college, I relaxed a bit. Then a little bit became a lot of bit, and my house and I fell into chaos. I am so ashamed that I don't invite anybody over anymore. Where do I start to get myself back on track? And be proud of myself again. It breaks my heart. That you took something that was so simple. And you threw. The babies went off to college. And you threw everything that worked. To keep your family organized. Out the door at the same time. And you need to rebuke. That. That whatever it is that has taken over your life for you to sit in a chair and do nothing. You deserve to have a home that blesses you. You got organized when the kids were little because it blessed you. It wasn't just for the kids. It was for you to stay sane. And this demon that attacks my fly babies and tell them they don't have to do anything. That woman doesn't know what she's talking about. I can just hear that demon sitting on top of your shoulder. The kids are gone now. You know, the cat's away. The mice will play. Get a handle on this. And stop giving in to that devil that wants you in chaos. Now, where do you start? Go shine your sink. Do it now. Go shine your sink while you're listening to me. Go shine your sink. Get the dishes in the dishwasher. Get them going. In fact, we ran our dishwasher. When you cook, you, you run the dishwasher every day. Go shine your sink. Don't wait. Get dressed to lace up shoes. I know you don't believe me, but do it. And then start getting rid of clutter. 
every flat surface in your home has become a pile, an avalanche ready to happen. So deal with it. No excuses. Apologize to yourself. Did you have a wonderful birthday? I was wondering how you celebrated. It seems the more birthdays I have, the less I celebrate. It should be the opposite. I should celebrate more since I've lived so long. You know, my birthday, January the 11th, these flowers from my sister and my son are beautiful. Flowers go away. They go away. And I I love you know, bring me my flowers now, not when I'm dead and gone. But you know, we didn't do anything. We went and ate Chinese. And it's my favorite place to go eat because they know what we drink. Hot tea and one water. Uh, they have gloves I can put on. I feel safe there because they know us and they love us. I mean, a lot of times, Letty, who owns the place, I mean, they saved their money. They had two, two restaurants in this town when I first moved here. And they saved their money. I remember going there and eating alone when it was just me. And it was a treat that I would do for me. I didn't do it often. And we eat there about every 10 days. But that's where we spent Robert's birthday. That's where we spent our... Um, no, we didn't go there for our anniversary. We went to eat German food. And we got message this morning that the DOT is not going to turn tear down our German restaurant. <laughs> they got a backlash. They, they were... That, let's just say they messed up. But w we like our German restaurant. And then, uh, but we had, we did, went there for our anniversary and, and Justin and Emily went with us and, you know, life is good, y'all. Every day is a celebration. Every day is a day of contentment. This morning, I beat Robert putting my shoes on and I took the peanuts out to the blackbird, well, the crows and I called them. I, I oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I called the birds. And next thing you know, they're there. So, y'all, every day is a celebration. I'm happy. I told Robert last night that we didn't need, uh, what was it somebody said, contentment levels. And... <sighs> I looked at him and I said, I am totally happy. Don't you be doing something to make things better because everything is good just the way it is. Robert has a little routine after lunch. He'll go out if it's not too cold. He'll go out and chop a few pieces of wood and put them in the fire, fire rack, firewood rack. And he's always puttering on a new truck. He bought me sideboard, so it makes it easier to step up in the truck. You know, he's always doing something, and we're happy. We're, we're pleased to be here. And we don't need a whole lot. We don't need a whole lot. Okay. Being content is probably one of the things that makes everything wonderful. I still haven't done Friday's clean out of the car and purse, but I'm going to do it this week. Yay! Where do I start to clean out the car? Does this include getting it washed and filled up? Right now, all I want you to do is get the crap out of it. You you have used your car and as a dumping ground or not as a cleanup place and start taking in every time you get out of the car take some grocery sacks to the car stuff them down in your console and then take a grocery bag and start 
grabbing stuff to go in the house. It'll go on your arm. You know, all you really got is trash in there. And then take it to the house and sort through it, throw it away. You're going to find things you didn't even know you'd lost. But Friday's our clean out our car day. But it doesn't include getting it washed unless you've been in a lot of salt and stuff. And you may need to wash it if you get a pretty day. But next weekend, it's supposed to be beautiful, like 60 degrees, y'all. For a whole year, I ignored the fly lady's rule. Sounds like Gibbs rules. <laughs> to get dressed to shoes. Because I didn't want to get my floors dirty with outside dirt. And I say outside because there's plenty of inside dirt that I wasn't cleaning. Finally, one day I decided to put on some old tennis shoes. I couldn't believe how much I got done. I have continued to wear my shoes every day for the month of January. My question is, why does putting on shoes make such a huge difference in how much I accomplish? accomplish? What happens? is here. We put our shoes on. With our shoes on our feet, we don't make that excuse. Oh, I have to put my shoes on. I'll just put that off. That's what we've done our whole lives. We procrastinated because we didn't have our shoes on. Can't go outside. Robert and I were putting our shoes on at the same time this morning. And I saw the crows flying in. I said, honey, the crows are here. He said, you got your shoes on? I said, yep. He said, put the peanuts out. And we put the peanuts out and there they came. They came. Happy crows. Our, our critters, we love our critters. They make us happy. But putting the shoes on puts the peanuts out there. I don't have an excuse not to take the peanuts outside. And when you don't have them on, it gives you permission to procrastinate. So don't do that anymore. Put your shoes on. At what age should I start my children to learn how to clean their own rooms? That's the wrong question. If a child can get out a toy and play, they can put that toy away. And you've got to start at the very at very beginning playing a game with them, playing a simple game with them. Like putting taking some cards. You can buy just you can buy cut a note card in half and say, make your bed. Well, a child, one year old child may not know how to make a bed, but you know they can make a snow angel in the bed and then crawl out of it. Make it fun for them. They can do a lot of things if you will be patient and not push too hard. Make it a game, and these, these babies are going to grow up knowing what to do. But even when you tell them, you don't tell them to go clean their rooms. That's the wrong way. Say, we're going to go play a game, and we're going to put away, just make those little cards out. Put away shoes. Uh, pick up the books, put away the toys, make the bed. You see how it works? And if you got a carpet sweeper, they love to do that. And they love to feather dust too. So don't think your kids are too young. We got, a, we got two generations of children that hadn't been taught how to pick up after themselves. If they get it out, they got to put it away. I started Fly Lady Routines this month, and I've been having such a great time on the live shows doing the routines with everyone on Monday through Friday. The women have been encouraging and loving, and I am learning so much from you. I feel like I have a whole new group of friends. You do. My question is, why are you called Fly Lady, and how did you learn how to teach us to bless our homes and love our families? I'm called fly lady because I used to teach people how to fly fish. I made a living teaching fly fishing. Taking people fishing, guiding people fishing. I was in a much better shape 20 years ago, 25 years ago. No, maybe 20, 
30 years ago, let me, time flies when you're having fun. But everything I've done up until Fly Lady prepared me to be Fly Lady. And now Fly Lady stands for finally loving yourself. And you don't come to Fly Lady to love yourself. You come to Fly Lady to get your house in order. But the result is when your house is in order, you're loving yourself. We've had one question that said when the kids went off to school, she quit loving herself pretty much is what she said. And she might have been, you know, empty nesting and having a hard time, having a hard time with the kids all being gone. I understand that. How did I learn? Well, in 1999, I woke up on New Year's Day, made a resolution, made two of them, to get organized and to be kind to me, because in the process of trying to figure out how to get organized and stay that way, I realized I was mean to me. And being kind and loving to myself changed everything. It changed everything. What do you mean when you say you want us to have the peace that you have? I have. Uh, what does that have to do with getting my home in order? I don't mean to be rude, but I just don't understand. Peace comes through doing. Having things done, having routines on autopilot. All of this creates a sense of peace. I can open my door at any time and have this week to my grandson and his friend helping, helping us do the last push for the move. I've done it. I've lived it. And that peace, you know, when you have peace in your heart and not chaos and anxiety, you know, you're healthy. You're healthier. You're amazingly healthy. When you can create that sense of peace in your heart. Now, it comes from the good Lord. But it's amazing how well you feel when when. Things are peaceful. There's no. Just think about forgetting to pay a bill and how antsy you get about it. Just think about those things. And you don't have to live that way anymore. And when we do have something, let's just say like pinball, his electric his his electric heater wasn't made for these his heat pump wasn't made for these things and he learned that he can heat his house another way and keep that heater from pushing so hard and he learned from what happened he also learned that he's got to insulate his pipes better in the kitchen sink because they've been without a sink and a dishwasher. So what's the first thing he's going to do when it warms up? He's going to make sure that the pipes aren't broken and he's going to insulate them better. That gives you peace. When we have an emergency, it's all hands on deck. We do what we need to do to get things done. Okay. How is Jack doing this week? We have been praying for him to be healed at my church. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Keep praying for him. He is so used to being. He is so used to being active. He's a captain at the firehouse. He, I mean, just two years ago, he could pick up a man on his back and take him out. I mean, he passed the test. And he has two young grandchildren. And he's used to, you know, being everything to those kids. And it just breaks his heart that his quality of life is not where he wants it to be. 
But guess what? God has a plan for, for Jack. God has a plan. And he has got to be thankful in all things. I know it's been five months of him going through hell. And we have rebuked that demon that is attacking his body. And they don't know really what's wrong with they They've said lots of things. But they don't know. God knows. And God can heal anything. If you don't believe me, read the Azusa Street book. I mean, you just learn a lot. of. Read your Bible. Healings were everywhere, y'all. Everywhere. They didn't stop. So you just got to look for the silver lining and just keep praying and keep praying and just lift Jack up and love on him. Love, Send him loves. Send him strength. Send him patience. Jack is not a patient person. And he hasn't been able to help with the move very much. So it's, it's, hurt, it's hurt his heart to not be, because he was, I mean, he's been up here and plowed my driveway. He's done all kinds of things with his own vehicle. He'd plow our driveway. God love him. He's, he will be healed in the name of Jesus. And the doctors are going to say, wow, what happened? He may bring his doctors to Jesus. Who knows? Doctors are the, the ones that get blown away when there is a documented healing like this. And we're going to see something wonderful happen. I've been doing Fly Lady for a while and I have learned my routines. I've even written them down and I check them off every day, but it takes me all day to do them. I haven't gotten all the free time you talk about us having. I know I need to declutter, but I just can't seem to work it in my schedule. What should I do this year that can help me get the autopilot part? I want to fly. Well, your routines may be too long. That's why I break them down into a morning routine, an after lunch routine. Maybe you need an after work routine and your before bed routine. Maybe four, you, you need four mini routines. M-I-N-I with three to five steps. Mine is make my bed. Get up and get dressed to lace up shoes. Swish and swipe my bathroom while I'm in there getting dressed. Go to the kitchen. Empty the dishwasher. And I'm ready to start my day. I don't eat breakfast. So you got to start decluttering every day. When I was... First getting started at 10 o'clock in the morning, I'd go declutter something. Just look at a flat surface and start flinging. Flinging five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the afternoon, five minutes in the evening. You'd be surprised how much you can get thrown out. Give away, put away, and throw away. Okie dokie, here we go. We're moving right along. Look at us. Hello, Fly Lady. This year, my word is gratitude. I wanted to say thank you so much for all that you have given me and my family over the last five years and pl five years plus. You have changed my life and my family's too. We enjoy our home and each other now. Thank you for that big heart of yours. And how you keep teaching us year after year. I know I've never met you, but I love you. Is there something I could do? Is there something I could pray about for you? That's sweet. I don't need anything. 
just just pray to keep us safe from evil. I mean, pray for all my fly babies to be safe from evil because there's some evil people out there in the world. And don't pray for no fear. No fear. Because God's got us. God has got us. I don't need anything. I'm reading my Bible two to three hours every day and I'm loving it. I am absolutely loving it. And I'm learning so much. This morning I watched Melania Trump do the eulogy for her mother's Amelia, her funeral. And it was beautiful, y'all. It was beautiful. Beautiful. How that woman gave up everything she had ever known to be the grandmother to Melania's little boy. Not so little anymore. He's like 6'8". But she gave up her homeland. She moved to the United States. And she cooked. And she took care of that baby boy. And gave him all the love in the world. And there's nothing better than that. <laughs> so it was a beautiful eulogy. My main thing is I pray for y'all. As I hear Robin Bullock talk about the partners on um, the 11th hour partners, and I've been a partner for a long time, he prays over his partners. He's got the names in a little um, thumb, a, a USB storage device, and he gets it updated every, every day and every night. He prays over all the partners. Well, I pray over all of you every day. Every day. So, give us, pray for my strength. I guess, um, that would be a good thing. I don't know why I don't. I try to eat right and take care of myself and get my steps in, but I don't lose weight. And I don't know why, but God knows. God knows. And one time I said, I told Robert, I said, honey, when, um, if we have an emergency, you can have all my food because I, I need to lose weight. So I'm going to fast. <laughs> But we have plenty for both of us. But that would probably be the only thing I would need prayers for. And we don't want to go overboard because I don't want to get skinny. But I want to be stronger for you. Stamina. So thanks for asking. What is the habit for February? I want to put it on my calendar. It helps me to start thinking about it early. I'm going slow on my baby steps, but I'm learning and having so much fun. Thank you ahead of time for answering my question. The habit for February is to declutter 15 minutes every day. That's the habit. Getting rid of your clutter makes your routines easier. Because when you have clutter everywhere, just deal with one flat surface at a time. Don't, don't start pulling everything out of the kitchen cabinets. We talked about this on our 11 commandments today. One project at a time. Just deal with the flat surfaces that are all over your house that are piled high. Just start dealing with one at a time. 
one at a time. And you get through, we'll have 29 days in February, but I would start today. Every time you get something cleared off, like yesterday, we moved a cabinet from the office that had my printer on it. It was a piece of furniture that Robert's mother had put together. It was a piece of cherry. It was a little cherry chest of drawers. And I set it by the front door. I got rid of a ugly piece of stackable tables. And Robert tore them apart and made kindling out of them. And we put that chest of drawers there. It's just narrow. And I put a glass bowl on this chest of drawers. It was a piece of blown glass that my mother-in-law loved. She says that's the most beautiful thing she'd ever seen. She loved it. So I put that, that bowl, and I have taken um, blooms and just laid them in the bowl with a little of water, a peony, and it's beautiful, beautiful. So I put that on there. I think I need a lamp or something, and I'll put that on there. I might put a feather duster on there in a glass vase. But you know, when you get a surface cleaned off, put something pretty there so you won't mess it up again. And it's our launch pad for me to leave the house. Robert has a launch pad by the basement door because he leaves the house through the basement. So decluttering, start decluttering right now, everybody. My phone's telling me to check YouTube. Anyway, folks, that's all our questions. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, please be with our friend Jack. Give him strength to deal with whatever's happening in his body. Help him to rebuke the evil one that is attacking him in the name of your son, and Father, give him patience. Give him patience. Sometimes healing doesn't come instantly. We're supposed to learn something from it. And all glory is to go to you, Lord. All glory to you. Thank you for this wonderful man that has helped me for the last 20, 25 years. He's just a light to our lives. And a good Christian man, Lord. Thank you. Give him strength. Give him patience. And help him to use your word as the sword to rebuke this demon that's attacking him. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, please be with all my fly babies who are suffering from illnesses and different things, please help them, help them to fight hard against the forces of evil that want to keep us stuck in chaos all the time. Thank you, Lord, for the patience that you give us. And thank you for the, the curiosity and wanting to find a way to change that is beautiful, Lord. Thank you so much. Be with all my fly babies all over the world. I know there are places of turmoil all over the world. Help them to make their homes a sanctuary in this new year. All these things we ask in your son's holy name. Amen and amen. Okay, y'all. Let's turn our homes into a sanctuary. Let's get rid of the clutter. Bless other people with our abundance. And y'all, we just got to keep going. We got to keep going. We can't give up. We got no fear. No fear whatsoever. Because God's got us. God's got us. We're going to turn our homes into sanctuaries. And we're going to be ready. 
for whatever comes our way. We've gotten through this cold. We're going to have another little cold snap. But you know, there's relief in the, in the next week. I love you all. I'll see you later. Thanks for all the great questions, too. Hey, everybody. We're going to make some rolls today and some different things. We're going to make cinnamon rolls. And we're going to make uh, some pizza monkey bread and some pecan monkey bread. So we're going to have some fun. It's a rainy day here. This recipe is quite easy. It's, it, I, I will go through it a little bit at a time. Stop it and write it down if you want to or take a picture of it with your phone. But this is a really simple recipe, and I've tried to make it easier for you. And I've just divided it up into steps to do it. So I'm going to walk you through it. And I'm making two batches of dough at one time because I have two big mixing bowls. I've measured out 10 cups of plain flour, and I've added to that a two-thirds cup of sugar and a tablespoon of salt. These rolls aren't any good if you don't put the salt in them. And then in another bowl, I'm going to add three cups of warm water, two tablespoons of jarred yeast, or you can use three packages of, of yeast, a tablespoon of sugar, and let that sit and get bubbly. And then you're going to add two eggs to this mixture. Beat the eggs up first before you in there, and a quarter cup of butter, a quarter cup of oil, and a quarter cup of milk. And you just... Pour all that into the flour mixture and you let your mixer do the hard work. Now, you can stir all this stuff and mess with it, but I like to just stop the mixer every once in a while and, and scrape the dough down. Now, put this dough, after it gets all mixed up, into a big greased bowl in your oven at 100 degrees and it'll rise in a between... Uh, 30 minutes to an hour. It'll get double in size. I cover it with a dish towel. And while that one's rising, start another batch. I've already, you know, I've already measured out 10 cups of flour and just do the same thing. And you, it's such a simple dough and it's really good. Now, this is my favorite thing. I love this silicone mat. I don't ever use it for making pie crust, but I love it because I don't have to flour this mat. And I buy these pans by 30 or 40 at a time because I make my cinnamon rolls and my rolls in these pans so that I can give them away. Now, after about an hour, 30 minutes to an hour, your dough is doubled. Punch it down really good and then pour it out on your mat or your countertop, whatever you like. And I like to cut the dough in half and work with Half at a time. I love this little uh, dough cutter too. It's like cost five bucks. And I cut strips of dough and then cut it into rectangles. And I don't like to mess with the dough much. Like I don't like to mess with biscuit dough. I just put it in a pan. In a buttered pan. And you let it rise. Now let's make some cinnamon rolls. Take a cup of sugar. And I like a lot of cinnamon, so I've probably got a huge tablespoon of cinnamon in this sugar. And I'm going to stir it all up. And I'm going to take that other half of dough, and I'm going to shape it into a rectangle that's 15 by 12. And the, my mat measures that out. And I just do it with my hands. And then I'm going to smear some butter on it, pour the sugar on top of it. And then I'm going to start rolling it and stretching the dough as I roll a little bit up each time. And you can feel it and it comes together. And then you're going to pinch the dough to make it stay together. Now, here's the secret to cutting it. I use dental floss. And you go in about an inch, inch and a quarter. And you crisscross it. You slide it under. You crisscross it. And then you pull it together. And it cuts the prettiest cinnamon roll out. And you put them in a pan. Now, don't turn them over sideways or you'll lose all the goodie out of them. Just put them in your pan and a buttered pan and just smear the butter around. I, I melted about six sticks of butter and, and just used it for everything. 
then then take uh, the cinnamon rolls and just place them in there. Turn, hold them sideways as you do it so you don't lose the good stuff. And then put them in your pan. These pans held six or seven cinnamon rolls. And then I did one pan that only had four cinnamon rolls in it. And they turned out prettier than all the rest. So I may just do four in these pans unless I get me some oblong pans. Where I could do more at one time. But these are always such a treat Christmas morning. Because I'm going to cook them and put them in the freezer. And then I'm going to give them to my daughter-in-law. So she won't have anything to do for Christmas morning. So she'll already have these cinnamon rolls. And then she just has to pull them out. Heat them up in the oven while they're unwrapping presents. And... I'm going to make her the uh, icing too, which is powdered sugar, some cream, and some vanilla flavoring. And you just stir it all together, and I'll put it in a bag so she can cut the end off and ice these these wonderful cinnamon rolls. And this is just such a simple more Christmas morning. I'm, you know, I'm not eating breads right now, so I'm making this all to give away, except for Thanksgiving dinner, which I'll have my rolls for Thanksgiving dinner. But I don't eat them all the time, so it's always fun to have have these rolls in your freezer. And I'm gonna pre-cook them. I'm not gonna I'm gonna pre-cook them and put lids on them and put them in the freezer. So all I got to do is take them out and heat them up. Heat and serve rolls, which is wonderful. Now what are we doing? I'm trying to figure out. I got another pan. Yeah, I had four or five pans ready to go. And these have little lids that can go on them and crimp down. Smearing more butter around. Goodness gracious, I've used a lot of butter today. <laughs> And just keep cutting them until you get them all cut up. It made probably around 15 to 20 cinnamon rolls, which is wonderful. Now, you can add some nuts to them if you want to, but we don't like nuts in our cinnamon rolls. I'm going to make something with some nuts in a second. Now, I've learned a secret about nuts. I like to toast the nuts before I make anything with them. That keeps them from being gooey. If they're toasted nuts. And they just work so much better in pecan pies and all kinds of things when they're toasted. I know this is, is really a long video. And I forgot that. There they are. So I'm making a mess there. Hey. They rose up real pretty. I just stuck them back in that 100 degree oven. And there. Look at them. You just have to ice them. But I'm not going to ice them yet. They're. They're going to they're gonna be um, frozen. And then all she has to do is ice them up. Next, we're going to make pizza monkey bread. So take four or five, probably around six cheese sticks and cut them into pieces. Six pieces each. So that's going to be about 36 dough balls you're going to make. And you can add a pepperoni if you want to. I like the pepperoni in there. And then here's my leftover butter. I've added some garlic to it and some parsley flakes. And I'm going to roll a bunch of dough around around the pepperoni and the cheese. And put it in my bunt pan and let it rise. And boy, it's cooking right now. It smells so good. Next thing we're going to make is some sticky buns with pecans. And these sticky buns are just monkey bread. It's been um, been coated with dark brown sugar, cinnamon, and and roasted pecans. And you mix all that stuff together, and then you take your dough out. This is my second batch of dough. And I started cutting it into little pieces. I put the small pieces in the butter, and I put the larger pieces in another pan to let those rise for rolls. And I just kept filling that pan up with little pieces of dough and then dumped it all in the sugar and put it all in and shook it around, excuse me, shook it around and put it in the butt pan. And then I buttered the tops of the rolls and look how pretty they turned out. The less you handle the rolls, the better they look, I think. 
I don't like to roll them into balls or anything. So y'all try this recipe. It's fun and it's easy. Yum. Come on in everybody. Let's see. Where's my hairbrush? You, you, you get in front of the camera and you see things that need tweaking. Anyway, get on in here. Get on in here. I had turned my computer on. It said I had to do updates. Don't like it when that happens. Don't like it when that happens. Anyway, we got a dead tr truck battery. I guarantee you Robert will come home with the... He's gone to the grocery store a day early. Because we got bad weather coming our way too. So grab your sheets off your bed. And get them in the washing machine. And we will get started on our weekly home blessing. Now I want you to do more than just... Just getting the house clean today. I want you to grab some anointing oil. If you've got some, if not, just grab a little olive oil and say a prayer over it. And then uh, anoint your house with oil. Yeah, just anoint your house with oil. I had seen uh, on, was it Twitter or on YouTube. I don't know which it was, but people were doing that, anointing their house with oil. And I thought, well, that's a good idea. I like that idea. I'm going to try it. I've, I've done it before, but it never hurts to. I've got this little uh, little nail polish bottle, which never had nail polish in it. But this is anointing oil. And I anointed this, all the states a, a few months ago. And now... Dutch Sheets this morning is anointing waterways and dams and all rivers and streams and all kinds of good stuff. So, folks, let's get those sheets off the bed. I'm going to get our tiles laid out. And I will will anoint our home. Today is uh, Martin Luther King's uh birthday it's his actual birthday on the 15th and many years ago i got this plaque and i think i was at 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 a church in houston and this plaque is a quote from from uh, dr king and it says faith is taking the step even when you don't see the whole staircase Many times, fly babies, they want to know how the whole system works before they ever jump in to get started. And a lot of times, because they can't see how the whole system works, they never start. So it's our perfectionism that wants us to stay stuck at the bottom. And you just go one step at a time. One step at a time. Okay, folks. Let me get the chat up. I didn't put the chat up. Let me see. In Oklahoma, they got six degrees. Patty started getting dollar-sized snowflakes. So y'all get on. We already, I, I, a lot of people are off today. So this is a good, good thing. It's not a. It's a holiday, but it's still a holiday when you can get some stuff done. It's not like Christmas and and New Year's and stuff or it's, it's hard. I'm trying to find somebody to put the sheets, get the sheets off the bed. <laughs> Gotta love Trisha. She is she is on the on the job this morning. Okay, folks. Let me get the music tuned tuned up get my antique ipod working we still have 43 degrees here today it is not cold but we have fires built and we're ready ready to go so let's see what i'm gonna roll the dice get that out of the way I got too many cords here. Michelle used to say, you're going to get strangled with all those cords. It's just one cord. It's 
It's my microphone cord. Here we go. I'm rolling the dice. Number two. Grab all your trash. Robert just did all that. He grabbed all the trash. The truck wouldn't start, so he's put the trash in the car, and he's taking it. So, let's see. Put this back where it goes. And I am going to play Room Patrol. No, I don't want the I'm Flying song. Okay, where is Room Patrol? I never can find this one. Ah. Uh, There it is. So grab your trash, get your shoes on your feet, and let's get the trash out of the house. Operations Unit Room Patrol. When Room needs rescue, you can count on me. Room Patrol, this is Dispatch. We have evidence of a hot spot in Sector 2. All members of Room Patrol respond. Move in. in. And eliminate the clutter. Let's go. Room We have thrown to the clutter in Sector 2. You're right. This hot spot is drawing clutter and slot. We're sending in the SWAT team. Let's get to the bottom of this. Get your gear. Place up your shoes. Room patrol, let's roll. Dispatch, we have newspapers hiding behind the magazine rack. They're taking over. I repeat, they're taking over. Please advise. Room Patrol, you have authorization to remove all expired newspapers and magazines from the premises immediately. Roger, all clear. <laughs> There's a cold red on the trash receptacle. I can smell it from here. Put on your gas mask and move in. <laughs> Copy that dispatch. No job is too hard for room patrol. Let's pack it up and ship it out. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Okay, everybody, let's uh, roll the dice again. Here we go. Number three, and number three is grab your purple rag, a wet one and a dry one, and let's wipe down our windows, our doorknobs, our light switches, Let's just get to wiping. Get those puppy nose prints off the, the windows, any glass surface. Let's get it going. And let me see what song we're going to play. Somebody get it in the chat. Let me find it. Uh, 
Okay. Fly Lady Rag. Sister was on it. Anyway. What song are we going to play? It's going to do an up kind of day. It's a cold kind of day. Sometimes I think the sun is rising too soon. Can I just pull the covers over my head? But then I think of all I've got to do. I don't understand Those it either, but get they my are body out of this bed. So I get up, up, here I go. Even they have ridges in them. I'm smiling, I'm moving. Them. Them. Get this body moving. Then and it grabs the dirt. Kind of thoughts gonna give this new day all I've got. And in no time at all, things are going my way. Gonna have an up, up kind of day. That's okay, Trisha. Up, you're on it. Up and up kind of day. Up, up and up kind of day. Sometimes there will be things that get me down. My day won't always go the way that I plan. But I'm a tough kid, I can deal with it. I'll make the best of it, I know that I can. So I get up, up, here I go. Even if I'm starting slow, I'm smiling, I'm grooving. Gotta get this body moving, thinking up, up. Kind of thoughts gonna give this new day all I got, and in no time at all, things are going my way. Gonna have an up, up kind of day, up, up and up kind of day, up, up and up kind of day. Even if my day seems low, nowhere for my dreams to go. I'll still reach for the sky. It's time to watch me fly on an up kind of day, yeah. Up, up on an up kind of day. So I get up, up, here I go. Even if I'm starting slow, I'm smiling, I'm moving. Gotta get this body moving, thinking up, up. Kind of thoughts gonna give this new day all I've got, and in no time at all, things are going my way. Gonna have an up, up kind of day, an up kind of day, yeah, an up kind of day, yeah, an up kind of day. Okay, we're rolling the dice. We need a one, a four, five, or a six. Here we go. We got a one. And that means grab your vacuum cleaner or your carpet sweeper, and we're going to get just the middles, just the middles. Let's see. What song are we going to play? Let's do routines, routines, because that's what we're practicing. First thing in the morning, I clear my head. I stretch and yawn to greet the day, then make my bed. Get myself all ready down to my shoes. My healthy breakfast puts me in a rocking mood. Routines, routines, they keep me rocking. Routines, routines, there's no stopping me when I feel the power of my rocking routines. Cooler after lunch, I keep my cool. Cause afternoons have routines now, and that's my rule. Homework before playing, quickly get it done. After that, I'm out of here and on to have some fun. Routines, routines, they keep me rocking. Routines, routines, 
There is no stopping me when I feel the power of my rocking routines. Teens can organize my day, give me much more time for play, help me know what's coming next. I think routines are the best. PJs on, I brush my teeth. Time for bed. My last routine helps me relax and plan ahead. It goes out for tomorrow. Think about my day. So proud that my routines have kept me rocking on my way. Routines, routines. They keep me rocking. Routines, routines. There's no stopping me when I feel the power. When I feel the power of my rocking routines, my rocking routines, my rocking routines, of my rocking routines, my rocking routines. Okay, what are y'all fixing for dinner? Robert and I are going to have chicken pot pie. Every once in a while, we like a good old chicken pot pie. Anyway, I'm rolling the dice again. Here we go. Number two. I already did number two. Number six. Number six. Grab your feather duster. And we're going to dust. Let me find our dusting song. So long, the samba. There we go. You can do all kinds of dances, hip hop or ballet. Oh, my God. 
Okay, folks, we got two tiles left. We got declutter your hot spots and mop. So let's let's get uh let's get to mop and grab your mop. That's number five. And let's, let's boogie with that mop. Where is the mopping song? There's the boogie song. This week we're in zone three. Our Main bathroom and the laundry room is the other room. Pull the covers on my head. Something sinks beneath my bed. Can't face my room today. Form the toe and scrape my knee with all the toys surrounding me. I don't have room to play. I can't find my book no matter where I look. And I just lost my shoes. So many toys around and tumbling down. Tell me, Mama, what do I do? She said, Pick it up and pack it up. Decide what you can do without so you have room to play. Have a chunk around, only bring two down. So I'll put me that clutter away. Only keep the toys that bring you joy. And pass the rest along. You can fly when you simplify. Okay, we have one more tile to do, and it's to clean off our hot spots. Our hot spots make our home look messy. So here we go. Cleaning off the hot spots. What are we putting the two minute cleanup song? Where is it? Two minute cleanup song. There it is. Here we go. We're cleaning off hot spots. Hey, everybody, it's time to clean up. Clean up, everybody, clean up. Choose a toy to pick up. We're done with clay, but toys away. Time to clean this mess up. Clean up, everybody, clean up. Choose a toy to pick up. We're done with clay, but toys away. Everybody clean up, clean up, 
Let's all go clean up. Everybody clean up. Choose your toys and pick up. We're done with playing the toys alone. Time to clean this mess up. Clean up. Everybody clean up. Choose your toys and pick up. We're done with playing the toys alone. Time to clean this mess up. One minute left. Clean up. Everybody clean up. Let's see how fast we can finish. Oh, slow. I've got this one. Let's all go clean up. Already, yeah. We can do it. Look, we almost done. Mm -hmm. This is fun. Yeah. You're doing great. This won't take long. We can do it. Mm -hmm. Way to go! Good job! I'm so proud of you. Thanks. Clean up, clean up, let's all clean up. Clean up, clean up, let's all go clean up. Yay! Yay! Let's go and play! Okay, folks, we blessed our home. I have a little homework assignment for you. I've asked Robert to help me with this homework assignment to come up with casseroles or one dish dinners or little things like that hamburger helper that isn't hamburger helper from a box. We had strogan off the other night, uh, Saturday night, and we've last night we had a little piece of of um, beef that was a flank steak that was in the freezer that needed to be cooked. And I cooked the steak, and we had some all gratin potatoes, and we had some um, peas, English peas, and we had a and I made some homemade garlic bread, and it was wonderful. It was wonderful, and all I did was put some butter in a little little pan and put some garlic in with it, and. I, I had cooked two loaves of bread the other night, and I sliced it up and put it in a little bit. And now I'm gonna freeze what's left over. So, folks, start collecting. Get you the homework assignment is get some note cards. Get you some note cards, and put together the recipes for some one dish, one pot meals like chili, or. Hamburger stroganoff, that's on our website. It's a can of golden mushroom soup, a tub of sour cream or cream cheese, whatever you have, and noodles. <laughs> you boil some noodles and hamburger and an onion. You know, I can't cook without an onion. Anyway, start collecting those recipes, those one one dish meals one pot meals, one pan meals, and it'll give you something to fall back on. That I told Robert to start thinking about it. Somebody's at the door. Anyway, y'all, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for all that you do for us. Thank you for the cold weather because it'll kill some insects. Thank you, Lord, for the snow, which replenishes the replenishes the moisture in the ground. Lord, we know you have us in the palm of your hands, and we're going to be thankful for everything. Thank you, Lord. Keep us safe from harm, Lord. Protect people from the cold. Help them to um, be strong, and because there's some hardy people out there. And to have uh, extra coats and things when they have, have to be out. Lord, we love you with all that we have. All these things we ask in your son's holy name. Amen and amen. Now, at 3 o'clock this afternoon, I want to hear about some of these recipes y'all come up with. One skillet primavera. Helps clean out the veggie tray. Oh, I can't wait to hear about all of them. So, y'all, 
I'm, I'm going to come up with five. And you can come up with five. You can do it. I love you all. See you later. Today we're going to make a pineapple upside down cake. I know it sounds difficult, but it's not. And here's the recipe. Two cups of flour, one cup of sugar, a couple of eggs, a couple of sticks of butter. It's simple if you'll just follow my little directions. Mix your flour and your sugar together. Stir it up good. And then drain your pineapple slices into a cup. And then fill that cup of pineapple liquid the rest of the way with milk. And then you're going to have a cup of milk to add to your flour and sugar mixture. Add a couple of eggs and some melted butter, a stick of butter, into that batter. Throw another stick of butter in that pan because you're going to need it in a minute. Stir it all together and set it aside. Now we're going to make the topping to pour this batter over. You're going to need some brown sugar, some cherries, some pineapple. You've already opened up the pineapple. Here's the recipe. It's quite simple. You're going to melt a stick of butter in that pan. Now this pan has to be able to go into the oven. So I use a skillet of some kind. Pour brown sugar into the butter and stir it until it, it dissolves or sort of melts. You don't have to get it bubbly or anything. Then you're going to add your pineapple slices to this butter and sugar. Add some cherries. They can be maraschino cherries. I had some dried cherries from Christmas, and I was going to use those. Then pour gently pour your batter over the, the pineapple and cherries and stick it in the oven for 45 minutes until a skewer comes out clean. That way you know it's done. Now set it on your stove and get your platter and turn it upside down on top of it and then you're going to gently flip it you might need some help but gently flip it and then easily take the pan off and you're going to have pineapple upside down cake do not allow it to cool or you'll never get it out of the pan so have fun with this it's a great dessert talk to you later I got some cafe mocha, a little chocolate, a little coffee. It's all good. So come on in here. Come on in. Where are my people? Let's get on in here. This morning, we grabbed a tool and blessed our house with, you know, sometimes all you need is a put a tool in your hand and walk around for three minutes. There's Trisha. And Miss Amber, come on in. Come on in. Well, it's a beautiful day. It's cold and we're expecting some bad weather. Um, sleet, snow. I don't know what all, but it's stacking up blueberry tea. Do you have elderberries, Tricia? It's always good to keep some elderberry on hand. Anyway, come on in. And maybe we'll get a little snow. We'll see. Justin's on his way home. He's He had to go to Florida to pick up his deer. It was a panhandle of Florida. And so they did a little hunting while they were down there. And now he and his buddy are driving back. His buddy's pulling the trailer and Justin's leading the way. And they'll go home through Athens and not Atlanta. So, y'all, I wanted to talk about how we get things done here at Fly Lady. And I've done videos, and I'll put together some videos tomorrow for 
our marathon around between 11 and 11.30, I try to get it done. And our basic weekly plan is every day has a purpose. When we were little kids, many of us sang a song. This is the way we wash our clothes every Monday morning. My grandmother had a day to do laundry. She only had like a couple loads to do every week. And she'd do her laundry. And she had days to do everything. And then that was after she retired. Um, before she retired, she did laundry on Saturday. And we used to help her. Y'all, we used to help her with a ringer washer and she had wash tubs and a ringer thing that would go into the rinse water and then would go into the wash water and we'd help her wash the clothes. Now she would only let us catch the stuff coming through the ringer. She would never let us put things through the ringer because you could take a finger off. But it was, it was fun to help granny. And she had a milk barn and she had a stove out there and she had a, a water hose that she'd give us showers <laughs> in the milk barn. Especially when we've been playing out in the pasture and gotten dirty or working in the garden or playing. You know, for kids, work is play because we like to dig in the dirt and do all kinds of things. At least Justin did. We did too. We used to play in the creek. And it was always, always something fun. So weekends are made for fun, family fun. Saturday, don't wait to the last minute to do your laundry. Do a load every day. If you start a load at night, you get up in the morning, put it in the dryer, and by the time you get ready to go to work, it's dry and don't ever leave home or go to bed with appliances running. That's just a rule we have in our house. So having a plan to your week we have Sunday is the, the beginning of the week. Sunday is the day we spend in worship to the Lord. Now, I do it every day. I'm listening to the word. I'm listening to beautiful worship music. I'm praying. I'm, I'm staying connected. It's like, you know, your appliances don't work unless you plug them in. And you got to plug yourself into the Lord. And you got to be there. And, I, you know, I'm reading in Deuteronomy 4 right now. And it's talking about how other people don't have the pleasure of being plugged into God. I, just go back and read chapter 4 in Deuteron Deuteronomy. It's what it's saying. We get plugged into God. Other people don't have that. Yeah, and those of us who come to the Lord through Jesus Christ, we are part of the Israelites. We are. Because Jesus died for us. Now, that's Sunday. Now, I do it every day. I take the Lord's Supper every day. And it, it's an important part of what I do to stay connected to God all the time, plugged in to the Lord. Monday, we bless our homes. We recover from a, a busy weekend of running around and doing things. Now, as we get older, the kids are doing things on their own. And that's okay. Okay. You can go back and listen to it. Uh, if you missed Grab a Tool Day this morning, you can go back and listen. I just sent it out in the email. Are you signed up for our emails? It's important to be signed up for our emails.
just because you miss it live doesn't mean you've missed it because it's there archived. And not only is it archived, every email, every every video I've done is on on YouTube. It's on YouTube. So you have a whole treasure trove. During Christmas break, I got to watching Frankie. Frankie off grid, and it was this young couple that moved to Portugal, bought five acres, ended up having to buy some more acre just because their their ruin was in the middle of a property line, and they're just a sweet couple, just a sweet, and they love animals. They they have three cats and two dogs. They rescue animals. And they were just precious. I sort of binged watched them. But I got all, I got sidetracked talking about uh, Ian. Ian and uh, I forget his wife's name. But they go and help Nick and Andrea occasionally. And Nick and Andrea go and help them. And it's, they're from the, they're from, they're from Wales. And Nick and Andrea are from somewhere in the UK. And evidently, a lot of people from the UK moved to Portugal and become citizens of Portugal. But um, I'm listening to the Bible and hearing about these olive trees and these vineyards and all of this in the Bible. Just all, all of these Things that were already planted, and Nick and Andrea and and uh, Ian and, and his wife, they have all these trees. Same way with um, Project Portugal, they have all these fruit trees on fifty something acres. So they're reaping the harvest of what has been done for them, and I think what I'm getting at here is. Patty and I have lived this. We have lived 24 years doing what we teach. And we don't just teach it. I Patty is born organized. But she has the systems that are natural in her. I didn't I I was behind the door when God handed out organization, but I'm I'm not stupid. I have a lot of common sense. And God gave me that common sense. And he, he taught me how to learn from my mistakes and how to understand what, you know, how, to, how to dig in and figure it out. And that's what I did New Year's Day in 1999. So we break our week down and every day has a purpose. Not the whole day, but like on Mondays, we recover from a busy weekend. We, we bless our home. We bless our home. And we get things back to working. You know, when one thing's out of place, it it's like if you leave one piece of paper on a on a cadenza behind the couch, it's going to collect a bunch of others, and we have to nip that in the bud, keep it cleared out, keep it cleared out, keep those flat surfaces free and clear. Gives you the freedom that you need to do what God has called you to do. <laughs> Beth was only two in 1999. 
I remember being three years old and being on a train with mother being pregnant with Leanne. Leanne was born decent, uh, January 31st. So I was two, almost three. And it's not easy to lose a sibling. I'll tell you that. Because you try to figure out what you did wrong, especially if you're the oldest. <sighs> anyway, Tuesday is our planning day. It's plan and play day. Tuesday, let's let's get our menus done for the next week because that's the only real way we can save any money is getting in our kitchen and cooking. And if our kitchen is clean, we don't mind getting in there and cooking. Wednesday is always anti-procrastination day. But after you plan, you got to reward yourself with something. Maybe you pull a pamper mission out of, out of your pamper jar. And if you haven't built you a pamper jar, when I, if you got the sneak peek this week, at the bottom of the pamper missions, there's five pages that you can just print out and cut up. I don't know what that is, Pam, but my feather duster is my feather duster. It's not <laughs> just a pretty duster. I should have it on where it twirls. Makes oolong sweet tea. That's amazing. Wednesday is always anti-procrastination day. When, you know, if you just look around your house, I did a video the other day, just look around, just look around. Every pile you see is procrastination at work. Everywhere. Everywhere you look around your house, if you see a pile, that's procrastination. So we on, on Wednesday, we tackle those piles of paper. We, we tackle the things that we need to do to make our house look great. Now, those piles of procrastination around your house, they'll get so tall that they'll slide off and it'll be an avalanche of procrastination. I think I need to find that essay an avalanche and it'll take over but if you police them you know policing those hot spots you'll be surprised at what how good your house will look even if it's dusty and you could ride in the dust if your hot spots are policed and looking good it's going to be great it's going to be great Your house will look great. Thursday is to run some errands during the week. Maybe you go to the grocery store on Thursday. But if you can't go to the grocery store on Thursday, try to get other errands done so that you don't have to do them all on the weekend so you can spend time with your family. Now, we've got bad weather coming. Do you have some board games picked out if you're going to get some bad weather in your area? Plan for these bad weather events when you're stuck in the house and you can't get outside. If it's rainy and nasty, you can't get outside. But if it's if it's snowing, that's a fun time to get outside. But are all do you know where all your mittens are and all, all your scarves and things? It's time to get them out. Kathy's gone through a pile of papers and nothing feels any better than going through a pile of papers. And you might find something. You might find a gift card or $10 from somebody. Well, 
Get your games out. Get ready to get people excited about playing a game together. I know Justin and Emily, when the kids were little, they got some new furniture and they had this big hassock. I mean, it's probably three feet across and three three feet both ways. And they would put Scrabble. You don't ever want to play Robert in Scrabble. He is a wordsmith. He works a crossword puzzle every single day. And the games fit in that that hassock because it opened up and we would play Scrabble. Robert wouldn't play Scrabble. <laughs> I mean, mine and Robert's first day we played Scrabble. First date we played Scrabble. I couldn't play it well enough to spell words, but I could spell trees. Anyway, that's that's Thursday. Run some errands so you can open up and be free to do some spontaneous stuff on Saturday. Friday is clean out your car day. Clean out your purse. Because that thing gets so heavy. You know, when you put your purse on, it hurts your shoulder. So clean out your purse. Clean out your car. And plan something for date night. So y'all, get ready. The weekend's on us. And Saturday, plan something fun to do. <laughs> anyway, y'all drink up. And the rest of how Fly Lady works is we break our home into zones. Zone one is your entrance, your front porch, and your dining room. It's time to get those decorations off. Uh, zone two is your kitchen. If your kitchen is clean, we're starting with our shiny sink. So get your kitchen clean. And, and do some detailed cleaning in your kitchen. I noticed... When I was watching Nick and Andrea a while ago, I, I forget the name of their their podcast. It might be Project Portugal. But Nick can do anything and Andrea can cook anything. And she was she was taking limes off of her lime tree and making lime pickles. Making lime pickles. Sage, I thought of something a while ago for you and your head injury. Get some coconut oil in your diet. Get, get, take a tablespoon of coconut oil every night before you go to bed or every morning before you go to bed and just keep some coconut oil in your diet. They weren't really lime pickles, but they she was going to ferment them. So she put some salt in it and some it was kind of like kimchi that she was doing. Salt, four tablespoons of salt, uh, three tablespoons of um, tumor. Was it turmeric? Anyway, and some apple cider vinegar. And she put it in a glass jar, covered it with a tea towel, and put it in a dark corner. And every two days, she's going to stir it. I don't know what she's making, but she found this fermentation website and she likes to ferment lots of stuff. And Nick can do anything. They're kind of like Uncle Nick and Aunt Andrea to these young kids that I, that's what they call them when they don't know what to do. Nick comes over and Andrea comes over and they teach them how to do things. So having a, somebody that's a mentor to you in some way, these are just young kids. And Nick's been around, been around for a while. He's been around for, for a while. And he can, he can render walls and 
build walls and all kinds of stuff. And he teaches these kids. He teaches a lot of people how to do things. And they're just a wealth of information. If you know how to do something, teach somebody else. This is so good for us to be able to teach other people. But your house has to be in order. When your house isn't in order, you won't do that. So over the years, I've seen Andrea and Nick, they, they buy things. I don't know if it's on Marketplace, but they find things that are, or they trade for things. They traded for a pool table a couple of years ago, and he built a pool table. They're fixing, their house was an old ruin, and they rebuilt it. So having projects is always fun. Many years ago, I came up with a bunch of projects. You know, you kind of sit down at the first of the year, and you just write things down that you want. Let's see. I wrote down what kind of stickers we wanted. A 15-minute book, uh, an essay book, a coloring book, a calendar, a testimonial book. Well, I've got all those. Control journals. I, I wrote all these things down. And you know, we've done them. A cookbook. Children's, children's book. We may not have done the children's book, but one of our fly babies did and her mother her mother did it, and it's in our last chance items because we don't have many of them left. But we did it all. We've done documentary type things. We've done vignettes. We've done audio CD, DVDs. We've done everything that's in here. So, folks... Write down some of the things that you want to do in this next year. Pick a word. Any word. I've had surrender. I haven't picked my word yet for this year. But I'm staying close to the Lord and I'm sure He will plop one in my brain. But start with our system. We break our house down into these zones. Zone three is your main bathroom in some other room. Zone four is your master bedroom. Zone five is your living room. Abide. That's a beautiful word. I'm going to have to look that up. We've had Fly Lady notepads, and they were the size of a dollar bill, so they would fit in your wallet. And I loved it. Anyway, y'all, be good, kind, and sweet. My number's up there. It's 111 right now in our shop. My birthday is um, a week... Next Thursday, my birthday's next Thursday. I got to work on my new essay about that. Coconut oil is just good for our brain. I'm telling you, it's good for the brain. I, I do a dose of it a couple times a day. Patricia, that's a wise thing. Her favorite word is today. Take care of what you got to take care of today. I've had hope. Yep, Hebrews 11 1 was all about hope. So stay in the word this year. Stay in the word. I love you all. Be good, kind, and sweet. Be good to yourself. By staying in the present. 
But when we take care of some things to keep us in the present, we're going to be happier. Open. Pam says her words, open. As in open the door. Open. Open your heart. Peter, you got moved yet? Peter's getting ready to move. God bless him. Be good to yourself. Be kind to others. And let that joy and sweetness that is in your heart show the world who you are. A child of the Most High, the only living God in the universe. Y'all, it's going to be a great weekend. Peter, did you get some snow? To God be the glory. I love you all. I will catch you tomorrow in the chat on the marathon. I'll see you later. Justin here today from Fly Lady to show you our brand new 2024 I'm Flying Fly Lady calendar and the I'm Flying Fly Lady mini calendar. As you can see the size difference here, there's two really great organizational calendars to help you get your homes and lives organized. Let's show you a little bit more about the Fly Lady calendar. Why is it 17 months? Well, because we like to give you the entire fall for free. And as you can see, when we give you the 2024 calendar with this, just like a normal calendar, so you can start planning next month. It begins in August. You can see on here, there is lots of big spaces to write things on your calendars. We give you the moon phases. We give you a place to write notes. There's a fly lady quote at the top. Holidays. And much, much more. The mini calendar is the same thing. It's just reduced in size so you can fit it into your pocketbook, your car, your purse. It's like a little calendar on the go. That's a paper calendar. Uh, we all know everybody's got, you know, their cell phone calendars and a, a calendar on their devices. But a nice paper calendar is a nice hard copy in case you lose your phone or in case you want to share things with your family. The Fly Lady original calendar is great. You can put it on refrigerators. You can put it on a bulletin board uh, in your office or in your hallway and your entire family can see you plan things. Uh, these also pair well with our Fly Lady stickers. Each one of these stickers you can pull off. Uh, it's got all different types of stickers for doctor's appointments, birthdays, uh, uh, free time, home, home blessing. It's got zone stickers so you can coordinate your Fly Lady cleaning method with your calendar. All of this is now available at the fly shop. We also have student stickers, which are sports, any type of activities. It helps to organize your home calendar or your on the go calendar. You can find both of these at flylady.net at the fly shop. The 2024 Fly Lady calendar. Get yours now at the fly shop. $19.95 for the big one, $13.95 for the little one. Go to flylady.net and go to the fly shop. Purchase these now. Both of these are on sale right now with a 40% discount using coupon code STAYREADY. Thanks again. I know I, this morning I said something about what we were going to talk about this afternoon. Oh, it was the feather duster. <laughs> I, didn't blow, I didn't blow it. Maybe I'll make a video and post it. In a little bit. That's what I'll do. On how to blow dry it. On, on how to. You don't really have to blow dry it. You just have to blow it. And it poofs up. 
Um, I'll make a video. I won't do it live. So come on in here. Where are you from? My little fly baby's in here. Yeah, there's Sandy and Jocelyn. Tamara. Come on in. Robert's got me a fire going because I asked him nicely to build me a fire. Your sweet darling needs a fire. Will you fix me one? So he built me a fire. Anyway, folks, come on in. Come on in. Pensacola or Lant. There's Miss Sage. Did you get a nap, baby girl? Did you get a nap? Anyway, folks, come on in. Y'all got some something hot? This room's a little cool. I wish I had a cup in here. I got a, I ran out of the chocolate mix to make my cafe mochas. And I'm trying to cut back on caffeine. Anyway, I was watching a couple of videos and I don't know if this woman is for real or whatever, but she has a heart of gold. And uh, no nap. I was delivering gifts, just got home. Well, you need a nap, girlfriend. Anyway, there was a family that lives next door to her. And the mama is not home often. She only feeds her kids every other day. Can you imagine that? Whether this thing is true or not, I don't know. But this lady sees these hunger kids and she feeds them. She feeds them till she has nothing else in the house. And, you know, the Bible talks about, Jesus talked about, when I was hungry, you, you fed me. When I was in prison, you, you visited me. And the disciples said, well, when have we done that, Lord? And he said, anytime you have done this to the least of my brethren, you have done it for me. So whenever I see somebody out, that's what I think about. I think about that verse. I think about that verse. And it's just precious, just precious. Anyway. I don't know if she's just doing it for clicks or whatever, but she throws together some little meals for these two little boys. And there's a baby involved too. And just, just, mm. I just can't imagine not feeding your kids. But I remember being hungry. I remember having to walk to the to the little store to get hot dogs to cook on the stove. I had to stand up in a chair to cook them because um, we got out of school early and mother wasn't home and she didn't know we got out of school. But we walked across this busy highway and got some hot dogs and some, I think we just had light bread. We put it in light bread. And I fed my little sister. I remember being, and I've told y'all this. I'm not going to tell it again. So whenever you see a need... You have, there's been lots of times 
that there were angels. And we're going to see this when we're reading the Bible. We're reading the first 40 chapters of Genesis today. The first 40 chapters. But angels came to Abram. And he fed them. Angels came to, to Lot. And Sodom. And whoo. So folks, whenever you see a need, you have to fill it. You have to do what you can to take care of it, if you possibly can, somehow, some way. It may not be easy, but doing the right thing is never easy. My granny always said, if you do what's right, God will take care of you. And we sing a song, God will take care of you through every way. I don't know the words. I've got them in, in the songbook. God will take care of you. Mm -hmm. Care of you. We have to do what's right. And doing nothing is sinful. Doing nothing. When you know to do something and you don't do it, that's not good. That is not good. God will take care of you. You got to do what's right. And when you know you, we can't be perfect. I mean, perfect, the only perfect thing is God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. That's it. We're not going to be perfect. But you know what? We know when we sin. And we just have to stop right there and say, God, forgive me. I sinned today. And you know, it's blotted out. It's just blotted out. just have to sit quietly and, and hear the Lord. And that's what I got from this little video. I don't even know the name of it. But she was feeding these little kids. And probably the act of her feeding these little kids, she never shows their faces. She'll be blessed. Through every day or all the way, he will take care of you. God will take care of you. Thank you, Katie. God will take care of you. We have to do what's right. And we know what's right. We all know what's right and wrong. Even though things have been turned around and we know what's right and wrong. And we have... Tamara says, back in September, a gentleman behind me at the grocery store asked if he could pay for my groceries. I didn't need him to, I didn't need him to, but I've been told to let someone bless you because it's a blessing to them. That's beautiful. I never heard that before. I 
would have been ashamed. But you're blessed to be a blessing to somebody. That's just, it's just beautiful, Tamara. It's just beautiful. And guess what? That freed up some money for you to bless somebody else. One of the things Ben loved to do is we would go through the drive through window and he'd want to pay for the people behind us in line. And he's the one started it. <laughs> and he would pay for, for the person behind us. And people would get the biggest grin on their face. And he'd... He didn't ever watch them when they were told that their their stuff was paid for. But that's a good thing to do if you can. So here it is, the first day of December. We could do a blessing every day for somebody. You know, we're going to be blessed for reading the Word every day. 40 chapters in the Word. 40 chapters every day. How amazing is that going to be? But you could go through a drive through and pay for somebody's coffee. Or you could... There's just lots of things you could do. And y'all are good at it. So maybe put in the, in the chat things that you could do for somebody. There's a commercial on TV where this little boy is going to see Santa Claus. And he doesn't want to go see Santa Claus without having something for Santa. And he goes back to the shoe section and he finds some, some house shoes. And he and his dad go up to Santa Claus and he said, these are for you for later on tonight. <laughs> that kindness. Somebody's doing something right. Teaching their children about giving and doing kind things for others. Oh, that would be fun. Adding money to a needy child's lunch account at school. That's beautiful. A lot of times at Christmas time, parents don't have a whole lot of money. Evidently, the, these little kids that this woman was feeding, they were out for Thanksgiving, and that's why they were hungry. So there's some good commercials on TV. There are some good ones. And you don't even know what they're advertising. They're so great. Sometimes I love to watch Jimmy Darts. And you, if you haven't watched Jimmy Darts, you have missed out. But he'll walk through a store and he'll ask somebody, if I need to get this. I'm supposed to take this to Thanksgiving dinner and I don't have enough money to buy this. And somebody will give him $2 or somebody gave him a $2 bill the other day right out of his wallet, hidden in his wallet. I think it was him. But check out Jimmy Darts. He helps people. Last year I saw where he raised $40,000 for an elderly couple who had taken in foster children. Hugs are free. <laughs> That's good. God is good. 
As Robin Bullock says, God is absolutely good. So y'all see where you can have a blessing. Maybe tip somebody if you go out to eat, tip somebody really well. If you can afford to do that, you'll be blessed. During the lockdowns, we did takeout and I I would just, it was just this Mexican restaurant we love and It was just the owner and this one guy working. And and he would meet us at the car. So folks, I had a lady come up to me in the grocery store asking me to buy her groceries in her three quarters full card. Being loved to go to um, Waffle House. (laughs) He had missed out on so much. He loved to go to Waffle House. you see a need, take care of it. That's why we're here on this earth, to be God's hands and and touching others. And when they see the kindness in your heart, you you can share the love of Jesus. We had a fly baby. I get asked for this testimonial every once in a while. We've had a lot of babies. That have been taken away from parents who were messy, mostly single mothers. And we've had some amazing miracles happen because of it. But this one time, we had a fly baby whose children were going to be taken next door. The, her neighbor came to her one afternoon and said, they're going to take my babies away. and I don't know what to do and I don't know where to start. And she knew all about the fly lady way. And she sat down with a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, whatever it was. And she started coming up with a plan. And she got the neighbors involved. Because everybody's got some extra furniture here, there, and yonder. And she got the neighbors involved. And it turned into a neighborhood active. She, this young mother had just moved into this house. And it needed cleaning. And it needed a lot of work. And, you know, by the end of the week when the social service lady was going to come back, they had that house turned into a home. They had that house turned into a home. But they all did their part. They broke the house down into zones. They got the kitchen ready. Somebody went and bought groceries and stocked the kitchen. And 
they put rugs down and built beds and even the social service worker was putting flowers in the flower bed. People were giving them a hand up, helping them to do what they need to do. So when you see a need, reach out. Because God's reaching back for you. He's lifting you up. Y'all commit to doing your routines this month. If you haven't been getting ready for Christmas, and I know many of you have just said, it's not time yet. I'm just not in the Christmas spirit. Well, get into the spirit. Don't wait. Don't wait. Because it's going to catch up to you. And it's going to be Christmas Eve. And Christmas Eve is on a Sunday this year. So you won't have the time to do the shopping or whatever. You need to have everything ready to go. And that's what our holiday cruise was all about. Okay, folks. When you see a need, do it. When, and, and that's why getting your house in order is so important. Because when you're rushed, you can't see past your two, past your nose. You don't see what's happening with other people. Last night we were at this restaurant, German restaurant, and there were two little kids sitting at a booth that only had a booth side. It was the back side of a booth. And they're sitting there on their little electronic devices playing their little games. And their mama was a waitress and she probably didn't have anybody to keep the kids while she worked. And those were the most mannerly little kids I have ever seen. And they, they had a good boss and he's going through all kinds of Terrible stuff. Somebody walked out of his freezer, broke into the restaurant, and stole a huge box of meat. And then he got told that there, the government is taking his property, that this restaurant's been on this one corner for 40 years, and they're taking his property. And I'm sure he'll, I mean, this is, this is the man that catered my husband's retirement dinner. He's got a food truck, but he still needs a restaurant to cook things in. And he will find a way. Helga will find a way. Because, probably because he lets that waitress... Let her kids sit right there at that table with a little drink. And they're not complaining. He'll be blessed. He'll find a restaurant. I'm sure he can take out his, his, his stoves and everything. And get paid rather well. So pray for Helga. God gets all the glory. He gets all the glory. So y'all spend some time today. Just sitting calmly. You've been doing that right now. When you see a need, take care of it for somebody. Take care of it. Holy Spirit will put it on your heart. Don't fight the Holy Spirit.
I will catch you later. I love you all. To God be the glory. I love you all. Be good, kind, and sweet. Be good to yourself. And when you help somebody else, you're being good to yourself. Yes, Jennifer, we will pray. Dear Father in heaven. Whoops. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for the love that you show us every single day. Help us to send that love to other people so that we can be a blessing, that we can be blessed to be a blessing. Such a beautiful way to live, to pay it forward, to help others in need. Thank you, Lord, for that love, that love that never ends. You're absolutely good, Lord. Keep us safe from evil. Lift us up when we're down. Tuck us in at night, Lord. Help us to be there for others and thank you for giving me a purpose in my life that I could get my home in order so that I could help others thank you Lord thank you for letting us be a blessing in Jesus name we pray amen and amen I really love the way the Holy Spirit works through YouTube. It just opens up our hearts to see good things. I need to pray for raising. Let's see. Let me find it. I lost it. Y'all, keep your voices quiet. Everybody said this morning, my sister has such a sweet voice. She does. And she speaks sweetly to everybody. She speaks sweetly to everybody. Follow her example. Don't be yelling. We grew up with a Christmas banshee, y'all. She yelled about everything, especially at Christmas time. I mean, we were eight, nine years old up on top of the house putting putting on Christmas lights. Now, granted, we were pretty athletic. But we were up on the top of the house putting on Christmas lights. We didn't know how to do that. So when you get your house in order, you're going to be able to see needs like you've never been able to see them before. To God be the glory. And the greatest thing he ever did was send his son so that we would have a way to heaven with him. Anyway, y'all, I love you so much. Sister, I love you too. And if Dina's watching and not commenting, and Susan's rarely on here anymore, I love y'all too. And my brother.
That's the book of Joshua. We're going to be getting Joshua real quick. Real quick. <laughs> oh. I'll see y'all later. Do something kind today. Be kind. But you be kind is an action. Be good, kind, and sweet. Be kind to others. Anyway, help somebody out somehow, some way. We can do this. Justin here today from Fly Lady with a special request. Today, I'd like to talk to all the husbands and all the men of all the Fly Lady families that are out in Fly Lady Nation uh, in, in the U.S. and around the world uh, to talk to them about something special that we can do to help out our wives by helping out in the kitchen. And I know some of you men are no strangers to the kitchen. You help out with dishes and things like that. My request today is that if you haven't cooked during this time of quarantine, when there is a lot of people that are getting stressed out in homes, especially the ladies, there's a lot to do. You're never leaving the house and you've got meals to prep, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you've got to get these either on the table, you've got to get them cooked, and it's a lot of stress to have one person in the home to do this all the time. My request is that men need to step up and there's more that we can do besides washing dishes. We can cook and cooking is something I love to do. And one of the things I like to cook and I'm gonna show you this evening, I like to cook uh, a grilled flank steak. And how I do it is it's kind of on a gas grill is how I do it, but you can use charcoal or how I'm going to do it uh, in our, our recipe for this evening is I'm going to do it on uh, cast iron. I'm going to sear it and then I'm going to put it onto the grill for a little while and then I'm going to take it off. Uh, with this flank steak, uh, it is for one meal that can be uh, fajitas. Uh, or you can do like uh, a Brazilian style with uh, charro beans and the flank steak. But for our purposes tonight, I am co cooking fajitas for the family with flank steak. Flank steak you usually can find in your uh, meat department of your grocery store. It's usually in a vacuum pack sealed uh, bag already and that's just kind of how they sell them. Uh, it's kind of a cheaper piece of meat and so it's a little tough. But if you marinate it with the right marinades and the, the marinade that I'm going to give uh, y'all in the uh, recipe, it needs to at least be on the meat for about four to eight hours. So if you let it soak and rest in that good marinade, it kind of breaks down some of the fibers and makes it extremely tender. And I know you guys in Fly Lady Nation are going to step up. You're going to help out your wives. And this is our first recipe, and I know you can do it. And a couple of other things that I'll probably talk about in future episodes is some great ways to also cook besides being on a grill or cooking in cast iron. One of my favorite things to do is I love to bake in the oven. And you say, well, but Justin, what do you like to bake? I like to bake my world famous chicken ranch nachos. Um, I'm kind of known around our house as the party food kind of guy. But when I cook, I like to cook fun things uh, like smoked chicken wings or chicken ranch nachos on a big old pan. And so what I'll usually do is grill some chicken. But what I'm telling you now, gentlemen, you can step up and help alleviate some stress in your family during this time of social uh, isolation and distancing by stepping up in your family and do more in the kitchen to help out. And cooking can be one of those things. Here's my flank steak recipe that I got from allrecipes.com. It is a great recipe and you can change it up a lot depending on the kind of things you like to have in a marinade. 
as you can see, I use some of my favorite grilling spices along with some of the things that they have in the recipe. I use two different skirt steaks or flank steaks for this recipe. I mix up my, my marinade and then I pour the marinade over the steaks in a Ziploc bag, zip it up and let them rest for at least four hours. For this take, I have actually let it rest for 48 hours. The longer, the better. And these are some of the fixings that are going to go along with my fajita night, which is what I'll be using this steak for. Now it's time to start grilling. I have a hot grill at 400 degrees and I sear it on a cast iron plate. Five minutes each side. Then I take it off of the cast iron and put it directly onto the grill grate with direct heat for about two minutes each side, still at 400 degrees. Then it's done, I wrap it up in aluminum foil and let it rest for five minutes. It's good. Now it's time to open it up. It looks great. I've got some extra limes on that. I've cut it up on my cutting board into nice little strips for fajitas. And I have all the fixings set at the table. And we're ready for fajita night. It's good. Enjoy. Men Can Cook from Fly Lady. Hey, Tom. And I didn't bring any tea in here with me, but I did bring my favorite pampering tool. And I will tell you what that is when everybody gets in here. Ah. Never miss a comment. Click on the chat message to display it on the screen. Hmm. That's interesting. Let's see what that does. Well, we don't have any messages yet. There's Sage. I got you front and center, girlfriend. Look at there. Hey, life and times of a Texas mom. Come on in here. Out walking my dog while enjoying the fresh air. It's still cool here. This morning, Robert got up and went to look at the temperature at our indoor weather station was blank and it has a sensor outside that gets the air temperature and it is in Robert's tree house and he put a battery in it and scraped around on some some uh, little discoloration turning green on the inside and let's see how this chat works in in, on the screen so that everybody can see it as it's happening. I know Isaiah Saldivar does this and 47 degrees at 3 a.m. That's cold for Florida. That's cold. Anyway, we had, I think we had 21 degrees this morning because we can tell the temperature outside by looking at our rhododendron. Because the rhododendron leaves do a weird thing. Let me see if I can show you how they do. They curl. They're like this. And then they fold in and curl up. Like it's a scroll. And they just roll up. It's, real, it's quite funny. It's just really quite funny. Anyway, folks. Tomorrow is December 1st. Uh, when Robert gets back from playing chess, and they did play chess a couple of weeks ago. Robert was so excited to get to play chess with Charles. When he gets back, we're going to get dressed and ready to go on our date night. We're having date night early, and Emily and Justin are going to join us, and maybe Sarah. She has a hair appointment. And so I don't know if she's going to get to come, but we've got reservations for five and we'll be good to go. I believe I'm listening to you live from Utah. Yeah, we're live from North Carolina. So December, we've always had December as our month for you to focus on you. You've spent 
the last six, seven weeks getting ready for Christmas. And now we're going to play through the holidays. We're going to bake cookies. We're going to have fun. Uh, and we are going to enjoy December instead of being all stressed out. And even if you are a little stressed, doing some pamper missions is going to help release that stress. So I want to start at the top of our head and work down to the bottom of our feet, just like we were going to be playing an operation game, but we're not going to play an operation game. We're going to, we're going to play a pampering game. So let's see how many um, things you can put in the chat that has to do with the top of your head, the top of your head. Your hair is on the top of your head. So we condition our hair. We get a haircut. We, we roll our hair and, and um, you know, just spend a few extra minutes just, I, I did that this morning. I took my uh, blow drying brush and and curled my hair a little bit because I washed it last night and put it up in my nightcap and it was had a little curl to it, but not much. But what do we do? Our hair gets dry and it's winter time and it's fly away. And we've all got hair conditioner you know, in our showers, ready to go. But do we take the time? You got to leave it on for two minutes. And sometimes we don't want to do that. But we got to take two minutes and do something with our hair. You know, you know, do something to make it not quite so fly away. So what are some other things you can do with your hair? I like, this is my favorite for inside and outside is virgin coconut oil. I use it all the time. I keep a jar in my bathtub. I keep a jar on my bathroom counter because I take a, a tablespoon of it every night. And, and that's when we get down to the mouth. I'll talk about that. But it's a great moisturizer. You can rub it on. Well, we'll just, we'll get to that. So hair, getting your hair trimmed. That's what my... Sarah's got to do to this evening is get her hair trimmed. She's got long hair like Nona used to have. And we got she's got to get her hair trimmed. It's getting those things done. There's some clarifying shampoos out there, too, that you can utilize. Uh, Neutrogena used to make a nice clarifying shampoo that would just strip the hair of all the buildup of everything. And then you can build it back. So just think about some way. I sleep in a nightcap every night. I just put my hair up like I'm going to be putting it up in a barrette. And I put my nightcap on. And then that way it's not twisting around my neck. And that's a great gift for little girls too. It's a great gift for little girls. If they've got long hair. And I mean, I never... I would... Patty and I slept on a hide bed most of our lives growing up, and we slept backwards on the hide bed, and I would hang my hair off the end of the bed so that it didn't strangle me. So that's some things we can do with our hair. Okay, let's talk about eyebrows. Sometimes eyebrows need to be plucked, just trimmed up. And massaging your forehead. When you, if you get a headache, sometimes you can massage your forehead, and this is put your thumb in the middle of your forehead, and that will stop any headache. Just dead in its tracks. Let's see what else can we do. Eyebrows. I learn how to clean the makeup off your eyes. Use these fingers right here your ring fingers because you don't want to pull on the skin I used to sell Mary Kay cosmetics and I did uh, a skin uh, a skin clinic one time and this lady was scrubbing her face and just doing just pulling skin every which way 
And, you know, she had huge bags under her eyes. And it, I said, I said to myself, that's why, because she's not tender with her skin. So taking our makeup off every day, guess what? This will take your makeup off too. It will do it. It's just wonderful. I even like to put some, if it's really dry, I put a little in my nose, just, just a little bit in my nose with a, with a Kleenex. And it's, it's, it just feels wonderful. And it sinks in really well. And then we got our ears. We got our ears. And, you know, we can't see behind our ears. And But, you know, our, our granny used to give us a bath when we were babies. I don't know why I remember this. But she'd look at our ears and she'd pull them backwards and she'd scrub them. And she says, they're just rusty. <laughs> I guess mama didn't bathe us like she thought she should, like granny thought she should. And uh, it, w it was just funny now that I think about it. But she'd scrub the, our necks and our ears. And it was just quite, uh, quite fun for granny to bathe us because she didn't have a lot of water and she would put about this much water in the bottom of the tub and we'd have to take a bath in that much water. And sometimes it'd be two of us in the tub at one time. So save on water. Moisturize your earlobes. Yeah. When you're putting on moisturizer and this is my moisturizer. This is the only thing I would use as a, a moisturizer. Always moisturize right here and, and your chest right here. Uh, my friend Mary Ann, that she said, you got to moisturize here too. And so taking care of your cheeks and your face and your teeth, brushing your teeth. You know, how often do you, you uh, whiten your teeth? I've got these little portable toothbrushes that I use quite often that are whitening toothbrushes, but I've also got a whitening toothpaste that I can use, or you can use baking soda. But a lot of times there are, a lot of times there are ways that you can have, you can make pampering things out of stuff you have at home. Like I'll put a spoonful of this in my bath water, but I have a rule. That's when your legs start getting itchy in the wintertime. I have a rule. I do not, I do not forget to leave the bottle in the bottom of the tub so that I remember it's going to be slick. Because I've got a, a, a bar to hold on to. But that tub is going to be slick. Now, we've had fly babies that used purple rags in the bottom of their tub because they said they were grippy. I guess it would be this side that's grippy. Put that down and it would keep them from falling. But, you know, having purple rags in the tub, it's a great way to exfoliate your skin. Um, underarms. Every once in a while we get a mission from Rebecca that says, you know, it's time to shave. It's time to shave. Shave those legs and pits. And there's a commercial on TV for, for Lumi. Lumi, um, it's deodorant that goes everywhere. Just goes everywhere. And, you know, sometimes we sweat in places we don't even want to talk about. But I have some antifungal cream that I keep that I can use to moisturize those areas. And it's just, it's good for us. It's good for us to know what our bodies need. Now at night, every night before I go to bed, I put on some chapstick for my lips. But also as I'm using that chapstick, I put it on my cuticles right here. And I keep um, nail clippers. I have a nail clipper right here, but I keep a big one that's straight across for the tub. And I have a little jar that I keep those things in that has, 
that doesn't hold water. I don't take showers, so the water doesn't go everywhere. And with a straight clipper, you're not going to get ingrown toenails. So that's taking care of yourself. So giving people the things that they need, like a wonderful manicure set. That's that's just a great pamper product that you can that was going to last for years. I mean years. What are some other things we can do um, for our hands? Many years ago, when I did sell uh, Mary Kay Cosmetics, we learned about the, the soft hand treatment. I don't know what it's called. But you took a, a, a scrub that you would buy that has some salt in it or something, sugar, and, and you would scrub your hands with it with some soap. And then you would take lotion and and put on it and put some gloves on and your hands would feel wonderful. Now I don't do that to my hands in the middle of winter because I want my hands to be, I don't want my skin to break down. Michelle used to suffer with fingertips that would crack because she was addicted to hand lotion, satin hands. That's it. That's it. She was addicted to hand lotion. So I, 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 don't like greasiness on my hands too much. But that, that's our hands. We got elbows that need to be worked on. Guess what? Coconut oil works on elbows. We I also keep a... Where is it? I know I have one here somewhere. I keep a rubber scrubber in my bathtub for scrubbing knees and elbows. And I also keep one of these in my tub for scrubbing places. Let's see. what. Uh, let's keep going. Keep going. I have a back scratcher. You ever get a spot on your back you can't reach? Having a back scratcher handy. They're bamboo. You can get 10 for like $5 on Amazon. I hadn't looked at them in a long time. One year I gave them for Christmas presents. But everybody needs a back scratcher. And to get those places you can't reach. And just think about working your way down your body. Now, my legs get itchy. And that's why I use coconut oil. This is everything you could possibly need. I use it as a, a mouthwash and I swallow it. And it's good. For, and today I heard something that said people who have thyroid issues are not eating enough fat. Imagine that. Not eating enough oils. So I'm trying to eat two to four tablespoons of this a day. And I buy it by a huge pail and fill up my jar. And it's all organic. So toes, let's, th let's think about our toes. Some people don't really get manicures in the wintertime, but you see your feet and you may want to keep some clear polish for you to, uh, clear polish for, for you to paint your toes. And your toenails are much easier to clip and you're more flexible sitting in a bathtub of hot water with some bubbles in it. And you can give your own self a manicure and rub the coconut oil on your legs and satin hands as Avon somebody said I miss what the oil you take is called it's virgin coconut oil And I buy it by a pail that's about 25 pounds. Because we go through it. So what other things can you... People put mayonnaise on their hair. They make a concoction with egg and mayonnaise. But mayonnaise has eggs in it. Uh, there's just lots of things. You can do sugar scrubs with... Um, Olive oil, I'm, I know of people 
who only used olive oil for their skin. Olive oil is a beautiful thing. I'm, I, you know, I've been listening to the Bible and the first pressing of olive oil they used for oil in lamps and the the parable of the brides where five of them had extra oil and five didn't. You know, being prepared olive oil. I guess it's the original petroleum product. Now, I love Vixav. I absolutely adore Vixav. I love the way it smells. And sometimes I put some right here before I go to bed. I also like lavender oil. And if there's bugs around, I like peppermint oil because it keeps the bugs away. And Vaseline was always good, too. It's a petroleum product. So I have avocado oil. It's just good to have these things around. You can turn these things into, into pampering missions. Now, while we're talking about pampering missions, you know, we've got our feet, our ankles. Prop your feet up every once in a while. Get your feet propped up. Get the blood flow. Make it easier to get back to your heart. Taking a bubble bath. Oh my goodness. Taking a bubble bath. That is so... Last night I got in the tub and I ran the water too cool. Because you can't get into a hot tub of water. You have to sit in the tub and put more hot water in. So I had to fill the tub up about twice to get the temperature of the water. Because I get chilled easily in the bathtub. But, you know, taking a bubble bath. And, and just relaxing. Now, one of the best ways you can pamper yourself is by what you put in your body. I need to eat about 10 almonds every day to keep things flowing smoothly, if you know what I mean. And all it takes is 10 almonds. And it gives me, enough, and I, ate a, I eat a half an apple every day. Robert, Robert pampers me by cutting me up. We split an apple every day. And I like to take a bath with Epsom salt. And it's it's just so relaxing. And it your skin is one of the... Your skin will absorb things. And if you've ever had trouble going to sleep at night, just get some lavender oil and rub it on the bottoms of your feet. I put it in a little oil dispenser. Let me see if I have some over here. That's a spray bottle. I don't think it would work in a spray bottle. But let's see what this is. This is a roller bottle. You fill it up with oil and put the little roller thing in place. And you roll it on the bottoms of your feet. And it's a great way. If you've ever had trouble going to sleep, just do that. Or I fall off my chair. Just put some lavender oil on the bottom of your feet. And it's good. Now, one thing Justin's pediatrician told me many years ago, if your child's got a cough, rub Vic Sav on the bottom of their feet. Now, Mama used to put Vic Sav on our chest with a, a warm T-shirt on top of us. Patty uses castor oil on her face and hands, and she's got beautiful skin. So taking care of yourself, if you don't take care of you, who will? And that's what December is all about. God has made everything we need. God has made everything we need. I 
I'm reading your comments now. Loomy smells like feet. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's awful. Vicks Vapor Rub on the bottom of feet and sock. Yeah, that works for works for coughs. So folks, y'all, we're going to pamper ourselves. And if you want to give a gift of love to a friend of yours or your mom or your sister, just put some, take some little pieces of paper or print it out and cut it up and put it in, take a peanut butter jar or some kind of wide mouth jar and and put 30 pamper missions in it. And just start at the top of the head and work your way down. And it's everything from putting something in your mouth to sitting down and reading a book. Y'all, you're going to love this month. And I want your testimonials. I want to see your testimonials for doing your pamper missions. Justin swears by Avon Skin So Soft. But you can use sugar for a scrub. You can use coffee grounds for a scrub. You can do lots of things. Napping, napping is pampering, Sage. Sometimes I just take a cat nap like this. And I might do that. So y'all, take some time this month. It's just 15 minutes. To pamper yourself and put together a pampering package for yourself. Robert loves to work crossword puzzles. He started working Monday's crossword puzzles by not looking at the downed section of the crossword puzzles. He says it's pretty tough. But maybe you like find a number or find a word puzzles. Get you some of those. Make your stocking, your your stocking a pampering stocking. Maybe you put yourself a new manicure set in there because you've had yours for years and they've gotten dull. You know, sitting down and petting your your cat for a while. Pet your cat, pet, pet your dog. So work your brain. Let's exercise for your brain by working the puzzles. I've never been one that liked crossword puzzles, but Robert and Robert's mother and sister all work crossword puzzles. Robert likes the Saturday and Sunday ones the best. And the, he'll do the Friday ones too. So puzzles are good. Reading your Bible. Memorizing a verse. Taking a, an hour for devotional. Read Psalms 91 over your family. Say the Lord's Prayer. So, folks, please take pampering to heart. It's, it's a gift for you. Put together your own pampering uh, basket or bag. Maybe that you could take it with you if you had to go sit at the hospital with a family member or something. You could take a pampering bag with you and enjoy the time there and maybe even... Do a little pampering with your family member. Uh, 
but love on those puppies and kittens. Spend time with them. I mean, every night I bless Samantha. I put my hands on her and rub her and 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 bless bless her little heart and ask God to bless her and ask Jesus to heal her. My mother-in-law was, um, she liked to whittle and do things with knives. She cut herself every once in a while. But I have a hound dog that she whittled. Loving on my chickens. Oh, that sounds fun, Heidi. That sounds fun. I know Walker Family Farm, they they did a video this from last night. They had to clip some chickens' wings because their death layer chickens were getting out. They had just gotten into a new area of the farm and they were flying out of the fence. So we have five uh, in the sneak peek that went out yesterday. We have five pages of pampering missions that you can pick and choose from to build to build your pampering little basket. Wash, wash a peanut butter jar or take a mason, a wide mouth mason jar and put together a pampering missions for a whole month for yourself. We love Farmer Jason too. They've had a death in the family. Pretty, I don't know who it is yet, but he announced it on Tuesday that they would not be doing a live show and they had a couple of videos in the can. And uh, evidently the, the family member that passed was a pretty close member in Brooke's side of the family. So keep them in your prayers. Yeah, we love those critters. It wouldn't do for us to have any chickens, though, because we got hawks. And we would really have to protect them. If you put the pampering stuff in a bag with handles on it, we've all got tote bags. Put it in a tote bag and you can take it with you. I'll be thinking of some more ways we pamper ourselves. But my favorite is coconut oil is my go-to. Coconut oil is my go-to all the time. And it's not expensive. Especially when you buy it in 25 pound buckets. Yeah, hawks are sneaky. But they gotta live too. How'd y'all like the chat on the page? Did you like that? Chamomile tea for eyes. Hmm. Y'all like it. Okay. I just, this is the first time I saw that. There wasn't anybody in the chat yet. And I saw that notice. So I put it in there. I don't know how it works on a phone. Well, y'all have a good rest of the day. Robert and I are going to celebrate our 27th anniversary. The man spoils me rotten. He just spoils me rotten.
Life is good, y'all. Y'all be good, kind, and sweet. I love you all so much. I'm so thankful for all of you being here all these years. Some of you have been here a long time. Marla, please do more what? Please do more marathons. It's encouraging. The, all the marathons I've done are in a playlist on YouTube. They're in a playlist. But I couldn't talk for six hours or five hours. That would not work. Carla's been here since 2000. We've been through a lot together, hadn't we? Well, y'all be good, kind, and sweet. Be good to yourself by enjoying the pamper missions and doing them, not just talking about them. Be kind to others by sharing some pamper missions with them. Maybe you give somebody a jar of coconut oil and say, this is the best pampering product you're ever going to have to buy and give a list of ways to use it. This is what flying is all about. In person, she's quiet and very sweet. <laughs> My sister's funny. Dana thinks I'm bossy. Yeah, I am in the chat with you, but I'm not there all the time. I got to get some things done, too. Yeah, having things on the phone is really hard to see. Anyway, I got to go get the flight plan ready for 5 to go out at 5.30. And I got to get the other Fly Lady Express ready so that I don't have to feel like I'm behind. That's another thing you can do is to get things done ahead of time, not be stressed out. No, she doesn't butter me up. She just loves me. There's only 14 months difference in our ages. 14 months and 11 days. And we've been each other's best friend our whole lives. Our whole lives. And for the last 24 years, we've been doing Fly Lady together. I love you all so much. <laughs> well, let's be good to ourselves by doing something I tell you to do. Okay, folks, have some fun this evening. Say a prayer for me and Robert. I'll probably have to drive home. He doesn't see as well at night as I do. And I hate driving his car. But that's just, it's just one of those things. Anyway, I love you all. I will see you later. Okay, I'll say a prayer. Dear Father in heaven, please bless my fly babies. Help them to find strength and peace while doing their routines to keep their homes and lives in order. Because when their house stays tidy, they have more time to spend with you, Lord. And that's a beautiful thing. Thank you as we kick off reading your word, 39 chapters every day. I'm excited about this, Lord. I will kick in tomorrow and, and start in Genesis and we'll read 39 chapters. 
Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. Thank you for sending your son to die for us. Thank you for people who are on podcasts like Gary Walker today. He talked about becoming a Christian and accepting Jesus as your Savior. He took his platform and he took it to a, another level. So thank you, Lord, for giving us a platform and helping us to bring more people to you through your Son. All these things we pray for in your Son's holy name. Amen. And amen. And if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, now's the time, as Gary said this morning. Get it done. Ask Jesus. Repent of your sins and ask Jesus to be your Savior. That you believe He is the Son of God. I watched my little great niece get baptized this weekend. And it was just absolutely beautiful. She was excited. She was excited. But she's been in church her whole life. Some people have huge religious experiences, but those who are raised in church, they may not necessarily have these huge religious experiences. They just know what they've been taught. And they've been taught. To accept Jesus. Okay, folks. I love you all. Pampering time took a while. Tomorrow we get started. You can start, you can start early. I don't want to leave you. God gets all the glory. Without him, I wouldn't have this mission. All glory goes to God. I'll see you tomorrow morning. I'll tell you all about dinner. And I'll take pictures. Maybe somebody get a picture of me and Robert together. I'll see you later. Bye.